What's up everyone? I just checked and it is still Ryan here and in this video we are going to be finishing off our view for the most part and we're also going to be learning about some third party libraries and why they are super useful. The library in question is called uh, Butterknife and it was created by an Android developer by the name of Jake Wharton. I will put relevant links down in the description box below. Please do check his stuff out. Uh, as we'll see in a moment, he has done an incredible service by creating this library and making it available to Android developers. So without further ado, let's just kind of jump in here. So we're going to need to open up both of our build.gradle files. Uh, so that is the build.gradle file within the app folder, and then the top-level build.gradle file here. So first things first, uh, let's go ahead and open up this one here, which is the top-level build.gradle file. And there's a couple lines we're going to add to it. Now, not all of these are entirely for this library that we're adding right now. We're going to be adding a second library in a moment, or sorry, in the uh, uh, video to do with the model. But uh, if, to be honest, I can't remember which of these things are relevant to which library, and I just thought I'd add them all anyway right now just to save time and because I'm lazy. So that's basically what's going on here. So first things first, in the top-level build Gradle file, uh, oh, just uh, head to the uh, build script element here, and then repositories, and just below J Center, which probably should have been added automatically, you're just going to type Maven Central, and that's going to make sure that we're able to connect to the Maven Central repository. And then we're also going to add another class path to the dependencies here. And that thing is apparently some uh, Dutch thing. As far as I'm aware, Neen Bedonk looks Dutch to me, but maybe I'm screwing that up. But uh, you're going to want to add that line there because that's that has something to do with, uh, um, let's see here, uh, Android API, I, or sorry, Android-APT. Um, I believe that has to do with, uh, uh, it has to do with annotations and, uh, being able to use a third-party library that uses annotations or something like that. I don't understand it super well, but this is why we need to add that, more or less. So that's, uh, I'll have you add those two lines there. And then navigate to the app-level build Gradle file. And uh, at the top of that file, we're going to be adding uh, another apply plugin entry here. And that is for that uh, annotation processing thing. Uh, just up there, sorry about that. Um, and uh, then there's just a couple more things we need to add down in the dependencies section. And uh, if you think this is frustrating and annoying, try doing this kind of shit on Eclipse. Trust me, it's easier with Gradle. So uh, let's go ahead and I'm just going to copy and paste these in. So I'm adding two more entries, which is compile Jake Wharton Butterknife 8.4.0. Obviously, you're going to want to check on the uh, link down below to see if that is the most up-to-date version of Butterknife. Adjust it accordingly. And then also adding this line down here for the application, or sorry, for the annotation processor, I, I think it's called, but I don't really know. And you're going to want to add that in as well. And then you should be good to go to use Butterknife for your application. So what we'll do is we'll head on over to Input Fragment and then see how this is going to help us out immensely. Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll do most of the work in our input fragment.java class. Now, since there are some components that we haven't actually made yet, namely our uh, contract interface, which I'll talk about in another video, we're not actually going to be able to complete this thing entirely, but we'll be able to get a lot of work done for it, and uh, we'll be able to see how the Butterknife library is super awesome in situations like this. So what I'll do is, uh, before actually... Um, jumping into using Butterknife, I'll just show you briefly how you would need to do this in sort of out-of-the-box Android SDK. Now, this is probably not going to be new to a lot of you, but this is a beginner-oriented tutorial, and so I am going to be doing certain stuff like this, so I apologize if I'm wasting your time. But uh, for argument's sake, to handle this the, stereo the typical way in Android would be to do something like this. Type private button one and i'm just going to type one but you'd have to say one two three four five six blah 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 including zero you need it to make a button variable for all 16 buttons 
uh, down here what you'll do and you can actually do this part don't do the rest of it uh, what we're gonna do is oops wrong line there so what we're gonna do is say view V equals that thing that I cut and pasted there and then we're gonna say return V and then what we'd have to do and this is for a fragment specifically it's a little different in an activity we don't really do this view v stuff or anything like that um, what we would say is uh, one equals button to typecast v dot find view by id then we'd say r dot id btn number uh, one and that's super easy to find the name of that because we have good naming conventions hint hint and uh, yeah so there's a couple different ways we could handle it at this point. We could say up in the uh, class declaration, declaration here, implements view.onClickListener. We could assign a, an, an anonymous class like one.setOnClickListener uh, new uh, view and then OnClickListener like this. Um, or what we could do is we could go into the XML and fill out an onClick attribute in the XML. All of those situations suck because they all involve writing a huge amount of boilerplate code and that is kind of one of the main criticisms of the uh, working in the android platform and it's also sort of a byproduct that android is java based so that's partly to blame there so how is butter knife going to help us solve this situation well what i'll do is let's just delete these things uh you can leave this as view v and then return v do actually make that change um, but we don't even need to make var <clears throat> variables for our buttons. So what I'll have you do is just come down here and you're going to type butterknife.bind. And then we're going to pass this, which is for context, I believe, and uh, or target, I guess. And then we're also going to say V. Let me just make sure I did that right. Yes, this and V, which is, of course, the uh, view itself that we're passing in. And what that's going to do, this method here, is it's going to set up Butterknife so that we can start creating our annotations. So, the next thing we'll do is uh, we'll set up some basic methods which uh, are sort of how we're going to interact or respond to all of these different button clicks. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll first start with... Uh, our first method is going to be public, void on number click and we're going to pass button oh sorry uh yeah button v and uh, let's just copy and paste that a couple times and i'll explain what we're doing here so what i've chosen to do is to divide the different click events into particular categories so for starters we're going to be handling the uh clicks on the number pad zero through nine basically the same way so we're just going to have one single method for all of these for uh, we're also going to have a single method to handle anytime an operator is clicked so we're going to call that on operator click and so an operator is is of course multiply divide subtract add you get the picture we're going to have a button or sorry a method called on decimal click and just because that's a sort of a unique scenario we're going to have a method called on evaluate click and that's of course when someone hits the equal sign and that handles all of the different buttons in our user interface or at least in in input fragment and that is good to go now the next thing we need to do is obviously figure out okay well how do we get from a button is clicked to firing this method in java because obviously we haven't set an on click listener anyway and this is where Butterknife is freaking amazing. So what we can do is you can just type at on click. And if you're kind of wondering what this is, this is what's called an annotation in Java, uh, which is denoted by, uh, you start out with this at symbol here to denote an annotation. And in this on click, we're just going to type brackets and then curly brackets. So you include the curly brackets when you are passing in multiple arguments to this annotation. Otherwise, you just do the, uh, I don't even know, the standard brackets, whatever they're called. And uh, I know I said I wasn't going to do a lot of copy and paste, but 
I don't want to waste your time, so I'm just going to copy and paste this stuff in, and you can pause the video and type it in yourself. For this one, we are going to pass in all of the IDs for the uh, number pad buttons in our fragment. So that's going to be button number one through zero. So uh, if you're too lazy to type this stuff out, you can check out the GitHub repository for this project, or you can just pause the video and type all that stuff out. I'll just add all the rest of them, and we'll just talk about them after that. So that is all the uh, all the information we need for uh, on number click, on operator click, it's going to look like, not like that. Wow. Uh, let me just try that again. There we go. It's going to look like that. Um, I like to keep these on just inside the uh, margins of that uh, cutoff there. Um, for on decimal click, let's see here. We just type that. And then on evaluate, it's also one button. Just take note that uh, we're no longer using the curly brackets since it's just a single argument there. And that's basically all we need to do here. So um, we're not going to get to handling these different clicks because in order to do that, we need to create our interface, which we're going to be doing in a, another video. Um, let me just double check and see. I think, yeah, that's basically all we need to do. Um, we can go ahead and create an, let's see here. I don't think we have an on create method, so I'll get that set up. I think it's actually kind of optional, but we'll just include that anyways. So we can just type at override public void on create and bundle saved instance state. And then we just call within that super dot on create and then we pass saved instance state there and uh, we might not be using this until quite later on or at all but it's just something you might as well type in there so that is it for input fragment so hopefully you can see that uh, although yeah we still did have to type quite a bit all we needed to do is set up an annotation call this method butterknife.bind and supply the appropriate IDs and we were able to assign on-click listeners for 16 different views lightning fast. Obviously, if we were to do that in sort of the out-of-the-box way, uh, it would have been just a, a clusterfuck and a huge waste of time. So that is the power of using Butterknife. What we'll do next is we'll finish off or we'll work on Display Fragment, and that'll be it for this video. Okay, so naturally I forgot something, so we're just going to add one more method before we move over to Display Fragment and that's just a new instance method and that kind of looks like this public static input oops input fragment new instance and then we're just going to return new input fragment for that and this method really just does exactly what it says it returns a new instance of the input fragment and uh, we'll need that when we actually create the fragment I believe in the activity although uh, maybe we do that in the presenter. I don't know. We'll figure that out later. Anyways, um, so yeah, that's all we need to do for in input fragment. Let's hop over to display fragment. And what we're going to do in display fragment is pretty much the same. There's only uh, one new thing that we're going to uh, kind of figure out. But just to begin with, let's go ahead and just fix this method down here. This is an on create view. And again, we're just going to type view v equals cut and paste. And we're going to return v. Oops, just return v there. And then once again, we're going to type butterknife.bind. Just to set butterknife up. Pass this and v to it. And that's a butterknife for this fragment. Now, um, what we're going to do here, uh, let me just type this out and then I'll explain what it is because it's a little bit easier that way. Excuse me. So r.id.lbl display, and then that's going to be a type text view display. Okay, so what is this? Basically, this at bind view annotation here is equivalent to calling uh, something like v, uh, well, let's say text view display equals v.findView by ID, blah, blah, blah. It's basically equivalent to the find view ID method. So what it's going to do is, let me just close my window because there's a leaf blower outside. 
Um, what it's going to do is basically allow us to, uh, well, it's going to set up display for us. And then later in the program, we can just call display.setText or something like that. And we don't need to mess around with calling find view by ID or anything like that. So yeah, super cool. Um, we'll also add a new instance method here because we're obviously going to need that. So just type, again, public static display fragment this time. Wow, that was a, that was a keyboard fail. New instance. <clears throat> and then return new display fragment. That's all we need to do there. And uh, let's see what else we got here. Okay, so this is kind of interesting. Um, so if you recall uh, from the sketch or just your memory, um, we have a delete button and also we have our text view display. And that's really all that's going on in display fragment. Now we're actually going to use that delete button for uh, sort of a double purpose, and this is kind of another neat thing about Butterknife that's set up. I, I really can't uh, say enough amazing things about it because it's really sweet. So again, we're going to type at on click, and in here we're just going to pass r dot id dot imb delete, and let's see here, and then we do. Uh, so we have two different types of clicks that we're going to handle from the delete button, and I'll explain why in a moment. Let's just type it out first. Public void on delete short click and view v. And we're not actually, again, we're not going to handle these yet because we haven't set up our interface, but uh, yeah. And then uh, let me just, I'll just copy and paste that and that'll be quicker. And we're not going to type on click for this one. We're going to type on long click click, and then this is going to be on delete long click. So what is the purpose of doing this? Basically, um, after I set up the delete button, um, basically to delete one character in the display, I thought, well, you know, it's kind of frustrating if you type out if you type out an, equ an equation and the answer is like. 12 digits long or something like that. It's kind of annoying to have to punch the delete button 12 times. So I thought, okay, well, what we'll do is in the event that uh, the delete button is just tapped, we'll delete whichever is the first character. It functions as a pretty standard delete. And then if the user holds the delete button uh, for a second or two, I, I don't actually recall how long it needs to be held down for a long click, but longer than a tap, let's uh, let's put it that way, then it'll actually delete the everything that's in the display and sort of reset the whole thing. So uh, that's kind of a, it's one of those things where we're basically expanding the functionality of one view, and anytime you can do things like that, I, I think it's really worth doing that. Now, in a practical scenario, one thing that I've learned over and over again, and this is just a, a quick tangent, is that you should never expect your users to figure something like that out. It's unfortunate and it may seem very intuitive to you, but you need to have ways of explaining to the user whether it's literally like a help dialog or uh, or some kind of visual animation. Um, you need to figure out some way of doing that because what will happen is that most users are not going to know that a long click actually deletes the whole thing. And then you're go they're going to rate your app out of 2 out of 5 or 1 out of 5 because they have to type the delete button more times than they want to. So that's just something you need to keep in mind when you're doing this stuff. All right, so let me just double check. Is there anything else I need to do here? Let's see. Uh, got that, got that. Okay, every everything's uh, looking good there. So what we'll be doing in the next video is uh, we're going to be talking about building our presenter and also the uh, contract interface class. And that's going to be a really important one because that basically, I, I've mentioned this several times now about this contract interface thing. Basically what it is, it's a pretty typical, uh, it's an interface. And if you're not familiar what interfaces are, um, I hope to be creating sort of a standalone video uh, on those at some point, and if I have ha if I have created it, I'll put it in an annotation here. But uh, most likely, if you're watching this before 
uh, 2017, then chances are I, I haven't had time to make that. But go ahead and do a little bit of studying on interfaces. Um, I'll kind of explain it as I go when we actually talk about it, because I figure I find that it's one of those things that people have a hard time explaining, and it's really not actually that complicated. But anyways, that's probably what we'll start with in the video, or maybe I'll do the presenter first. I don't really plan that far ahead with these things. Uh, but yeah, we're going to do that, and we'll kind of see what this contract interface does. Is it basically allows our different parts of the uh, model view presenter, the model, the view, the presenter, it allows those things to communicate with each other and uh, without having to know each other explicitly for the most part. And uh, we'll see why that's really useful later on. So thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.